UCF appears to be back on track, and it's a good time to evaluate where the Gus Malzahn program is at this point. You know, entering the second year and after a year in which they improved as the season went along, it wasn't looking super promising at the beginning, but they were able to figure things out as the end of the season came along. This is a team that has the talent to compete in the AAC. This might not be like a 2017 team, but there's plenty of talent that suggests that they should be competing with the Cincinnati's and the Houston's of the AAC. The 10 players that we'll talk about today are just 10 of the players that are going to make an impact. This is a team that has talent outside of these 10, uh, along with the potential impact that these players will have. That's going to be a factor when we're discussing them. But let's break down what makes them so good or what makes them so important to this UCF team. Isaiah Bowser comes in at number one, and this was tough to pick the top player for this team because there's so many good options. But I think when you're looking at Isaiah Bowser, his stats maybe not aren't the best of anybody on this team, but this is a player who is, when you need a pl- them someone to make a play, you're going to look at as Isaiah Bowser. This is a bruising running back who is equipped to handle the pounding that it can be the bell cow back for any team. And 703 yards with nine touchdowns last year suggests that he is more than capable of hand, handling the load that Yusef is going to ask him to provide, and he's going to have the production necessary to keep this team going. And when they need a play, like I said, at a critical time, he's going to be the one that they look to. Ryan O'Keefe comes in at number two. The speedy receiver, it's kind of hard because when you look at his stats, they don't tell you that he is this explosive playmaker. He only averaged 9.7 yards per catch. But he had 84 catches last year, and we saw what he could do against Florida. You know exactly what you're getting from Ryan O'Keefe. So he's actually proven that he can be a reliable pass catcher, but he's also extremely explosive. So just looking at the stats is kind of misleading because he's more than capable of being much better and more explosive than those numbers indicate. One thing that has gone really well for UCF is their defense has stepped it up. And Devod Wilson is a Georgia transfer who's going to have a big impact on this team, maybe be the next UCF a NFL draft pick uh, that we've seen on the defensive side of the ball. The offense gets a lot of love because of Melzahn and because of what he's capable of doing, but it's actually the defense that has stepped up in a big way and proven to be an asset for this Knights team. Wilson is, is a great safety. He's a leader of that secondary, and it's a secondary that I think is going to be one of the best in the conference, maybe one of the best in the country. When you look at what the talent that they have returning on top of Wilson, This is a good group that's going to have a a lot of success in 2022. It was really interesting to see what Ricky Barber could do in his first year from Western Kentucky. I wasn't quite sure what we were going to see from him. I think that everybody was expecting Big Cat Brian to do great things, and we saw uh, plenty of success from him. But Ricky Barber is going to have a bigger impact this year, and we saw that last season as well. This is a group that has some good depth. At, especially a defensive line, the defense is going to be fun to watch. And if the defensive line is having an impact, like I think they can have, especially a guy like Barber, then teams are going to struggle facing UCF. And this is going to be a well-rounded team because the offense is going to do its thing, but the defense is also going to do what they need to do to contribute to wins and be make, like I said, make this team a well-rounded team, a very dangerous team, one that's going to compete, like I said, for conference titles and shut teams down at certain points in games. Johnny Richardson is listed fifth here, but he is more than capable of being first on this list. His speed and explosiveness cannot be overlooked. You cannot, uh, you can't just look past him. This is not a player that is going to be under the radar. Teams know what they have to do. The only question is how many touches is he going to get? Now, does UCF use him in the slot with the talent that they have at receiver? And we'll talk about some of those guys a little bit later. It's going to be tough to get guys the football. Touches are going to come at a premium. So you essentially have to be efficient with what you do when you get the football in your hands. Johnny Richardson had 104 carries. He also had 25 catches. I think you have to somehow find a way to get that number up. You have to find a way to get him the football. And with his speed and explosiveness, there's no reason why that shouldn't happen. And you're going to see the results when that does happen. 
Samuel Jackson may not have the ceiling that a lot of his teammates do, and especially on the offensive line, but this is a guy who has a ton of versatility that adds to his value. Like I said, his ceiling just in terms of talent may not be very high, but the value he brings is something that none of his teammates can provide. This is a guy who played both guard spots and both tackle spots over the last few years, and he's been successful at all four spots. He's uh, he's knows what he's doing. He's experienced at every position. And the fact that one guy can add so much depth to nearly every position except for center, although I'm pretty sure if they put him at center, he would be just fine. That's something that you can't overlook. That's something that can't be overappreciated because he's so good in that regard where even if he doesn't have the ceiling that his teammates do, He provides plenty of value and plenty of talent that's going to be utilized. The defensive line, like I said, is going to have, I think, a big year, and it's a talented group. It just comes down to can they break out, can they take that next step. Joshua Seliskar has been on everyone's radar for a little while now if you're a UCF fan, and I think that we just have to see him take a step. He's right there in terms of, you look at last year, seven and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. Those are decent numbers, but nothing crazy, nothing elite by any means. If he takes another step, this defensive line, this front seven is going to be a nightmare to stop. And there's already times where we've seen that. We've seen him produce a number of explosive plays. And it just comes down to, like I said, can he take a step and can he be better than what we've seen in the past? And, in the past, it's been good, but can he take that next step to great? Devontae Brown might not deserve to be this low on the list, but that's you know that's a testament to how good UCF is, how talented this roster is. I think that Devontae Brown is another guy who could sl- go all the way up to number one when the season ends. He's a tall, long cornerback that has good speed, can run with anybody, can compete with anybody, and he kind of took a step forward last year. When I mean, you're looking at what he's capable of doing, he has shutdown ability, and I think that at with his size and his range, the NFL is going to take a long, hard look at him in terms of maybe being the next what Sauce Gardner was for Cincinnati. Can he be that for UCF? Again, if this defense does what I think it's capable of doing, this is going to be a fun team to watch. This is going to be maybe not a defensive heavy team, but one that's going to be able to shut teams down, and the secondary has the talent to be really exciting and extremely dynamic and be able to make a big impact in 2022. Now, I mentioned that there's a ton of pass catchers that you could put on this list. I'm a big fan of Kamari Gamble. I think that he's going to have a major impact on this offense. At tight end, he's more of a, a, like a wide receiver, a pass catching tight end. Uh, that's going to have a bigger impact in that part of the offense. I think that he just brings the most value to this offense. You look at Kobe Hudson comes in. You have Amari Johnson. We talked about Ryan O'Keefe. There's so many players that Gus Malzahn has to utilize, regardless of who plays quarterback. It's just going to come down to which guys step up, and I think Gamble has the chance to do that. He's going to be one of the best players on this roster, if you ask my opinion. And it's going to be something that we'll pay attention to, see who steps up. But I think Gamble's a guy to pay attention to if you're looking for someone to step up and break out. Now, we mentioned the quarterback position. Mikey Keene and John Rice Plumley are going to battle for this spot. To me, if you're looking at peak, I don't know what we're, we're looking at for a ceiling with Mikey Keene. I know what this offense can be with Plumley. If you look at what he did in 2019, he's obviously taken a couple – a couple of years off at turn in terms of playing quarterback. But when you look at what he did in 2019, he had over a thousand yards rushing with 12 touchdowns, especially against LSU. One of the arguably the best team we've ever seen in college football. He made them look like a, an average sec team, at least defensively. He made them look so bad. And that's from a guy who can still take a step forward in terms of passing. If he takes a step forward as a passer, and provides explosive running. He's the perfect fit for Gus Malzahn's offense. I broke down what he brings to that team and brings to this offense, and it's going to be exciting to see what he can do, especially after what we saw in the spring. There's a lot of excitement surrounding his game. It's going to be fun to see what that translates into and if it turns into be one of the best offenses that we've seen at UCF, which is a tall order, but I think that with the talent they have, 
is more than capable. And that's going to be something they need to have with the offenses that they're going to face. It's going to be hard to shut teams down. They have the defense to do it. But if their defense needs to take a step back for whatever reason or has an off game, can the offense do it? I, Like I said, the talent's there. The coaching is there. It just comes down to putting it on the field. And UCF fans have a lot to be excited about this year.